Good morning, all you junkies. Uh, there was a little change in plans, so we decided to come to Bush Gardens today instead of tomorrow. Uh, won't go into the details, but we have some interesting things going on this past week. Uh, first off, the track layout is complete for Phoenix Rising. Uh, plus some other goodies. So let's go check it out. many buses, four or five buses or so. So there is a couple of groups here at least. But other than that, seems like a pretty white crowded day for a Friday. I do see one group though in front of us. Okay, for those of you who are wondering what's going on with Cobra's Curse, we're gonna go through the regular queue for once for you. get dark. Yeah, it gets dark. Ooh, and I run into a pole. Yeah. There's a big huge snake right there. It's a real live one, guys. Thank you. 
when we're also in the back, back, back row. Very back. The very back. So this should be very unusual footage. Kind of interesting how that works, huh? Got the Serengeti. Sideways. <laughs> yeah, no spinach. So as you can see here from Q Times, today should be a yellow day with 49%. Yesterday, well, yesterday was a washout and they closed early. And Wednesday, well, this whole week was pretty light. Monday being 13%, Tuesday being 7 Wednesday being 26 All below, well below what they figured. But yeah, Friday looks like 50%, which is doable, but it looks like it may be even a little bit more than that today. Are you guys ready to face your fears again? One of the best houses. And the nice thing is, it still looks good. I think I got the good side. Yes, sir. Yeah. I thought you were gonna sit on that side. No. Hello, Lou. <laughs> we like your ride. Is it chilling today? Yeah, it's just chilling today. Good. You enjoy your. They get some I'm nice new shots of Phoenix Rising too. Good. I've seen you. You enjoy your birth. You too. One of our buddies, Lou, there, who uh, runs a sky ride. Oh, it's a little breezy. Uh oh. Okay. These winds are a little bit more than what I was expecting, but at least the sky ride is still open. And you got the Serengeti Flyer. And we got a couple of hippos, it looks like, in the water. Can't see them. Trees in the way. There they are! So, yeah. We got Serengeti Flyer running one side. And we got a big old crane over here for some reason. What is that crane doing there? And how in the world did they get that crane there? Oh, <coughs> a little road. <coughs> <coughs> that crane is <coughs> where is that crane is that in the uh, gorilla habitat 
No, the gorilla habitat's in a different place. Well, Serengeti Fire, if you can read it, only has a five minute wait. But that's not what we're here for. Ow. Now you can see a bit of it there. You can see it there. You can see it way up there. They need to do something and trim down this tree so we can see it. Where's the stinky elephant? Um, Probably in the back or way over there. Nope, there's I one. one. One over here. Uh, two. There's another one. It looks like... Uh, Usually they have three of them out. There's another one back there. All right. Behind the gate. Oh, right there, right on the gate. Behind the gate. Yes, right by the gate. Yeah. All right. So, with the latest news, the track is fully complete. I can't believe they got it done that fast. I thought it was going to take another like the the week. The lift motor is on there. Yep. They're still doing work on the uh, station building. Oh, and it looks like they took our suggestion and put some more stuff here and actually put some sand, sod down. No more big cracks. Well, and they there's Loretta. That, they don't have that thing supported anymore by the rope. Good morning. Hey, I got to do it today, okay? Yeah. Good. All right, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Hopefully the wind gusts stay down. Uh, I hope so, sir. I hope so. Because that one little gust looks like it hit about 25. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I look at that. So. Sucking up the sun. Yeah. No, it's still held on by a strap. Oh, they do? Yep, yeah. they do. Wow, but they got it. Yeah, and this is the last little section right down here that they were finishing up. Yep. Right in there. The turns. Man, you're gonna be swinging a lot. Yeah, you're gonna be swinging a heck of a lot. I don't know, I haven't heard Fal uh, uh, Falcon's Fury running. I don't know, we'll find out. Win, win, stay away, come back another day. We don't want the sky ride to stop. So already, the log flume is starting to look dirty again. Wow. After they pressure washed it all. So what do they do with all that reserve water that spills out over? I know it goes over there. Hello. Usually in that big pond. Oh. And then when they empty that out, that goes somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any 
Uh, not that I can see. But, but they look like they were doing some work on the top. No. We're going to have to take another close up look when we get off the sky ride. But that is some amazing work they got accomplished in one week. Yep. Let's see, at least, uh, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably you ten can pieces. Count that high? Yes, and I didn't even have to take off my cocks. <laughs> so yeah, uh, looks like about ten pieces of track since the last time we visited i was thinking they would take probably a couple of weeks to get it finished but there it is it's done now, all the track is done yeah but they need to go around and tighten down all the bolts and if you look at the bottom of the supports there's no grout at the bottom of the supports so they're gonna have to grab the supports. Get the train actually on the track. Once they get the train on the track, then they can run tests. And once they run tests, then they can put us dummies on it. Dust bunnies? Test dummies. Oh, test dummies. That's why you said dust bunnies. No, us bunnies. Uh, us, but uh, that, that, yeah, us, please. You dummy. Well, I, I, I'm. I, I'll be glad to be a test dummy. Wouldn't you like to be a test dummy to be a <laughs> dummy? Drink, doctor, dummy. <laughs> what? I don't know. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. Can't wait for it to start running <coughs> and see what it's really like. Well, it's not going to go that fast. No. I mean, 40, I think they said, what, 44 miles an hour or so? What, they can't put it up to 45? They're scared of one mile my favorite ride I like that ride And I like Iron Wazzy too. Yeah, this area doesn't look too crowded yet. Uh, just give it a couple of hours, it will. No train and no cheetah hunt going by. Good grief. What's going on? We can't get the good shots. Oh, here it comes. They're coming. I'm not assuming we'll be on there. Hmm? Soon we'll be on there. Yep.
Okay, so that is actually where the lions and uh, hyenas. hyenas are. Let's see if the two girls, yep, the two girls are still in the water. Yep. And there goes Cheetah Hut. There's the lemurs. They're in the shade. Hiding in the shade. Yeah, hiding in the shade. And this will end our trip on the sky ride. Yeah, when riding the ride. See that uh, purse up there? Don't bring the purses up in the line. Kind of delays the whole entire ride. Must have been there first time. Okay, well there's Debbie right there with her kinky tail. And right around here is oh. Kida. Hi Kida. Oh, Debbie's coming up for some air. Yeah. A stork just came in here too. So where's the gator? Mm, I don't know. But they're not doing they're doing some work over here. So we can't go this way. Here they are, Bubba and Jimmy and their girlfriends. Still have to figure out what the names are of the girls. Good thing I got them in sport mode. Yeah. Stay in the tower. <laughs> okay. Tower clear, starting ride. Any day now. Oh, that's a long way up there, buddy. Oh yeah. Have you been on it before? Yeah. 
First her, time. It's her favorite ride. Oh. First time. Okay, think of it like a backyard swing on steroids. Right. Um, pop, I'm all clear, starting right. Thank you. gonna try to get by these real quick because this smell is bad today it might be just the direction of the wind but yeah I think the elephants need a bath thought I saw three of them out there yeah there be our beautiful stinky girls Probably already guessed it, but yes, we are on Falcon's Fury again for another construction update of Phoenix Rising. Since last week, they have completed the track. So now we have the complete layout. There's a station, the lift goes down, around, comes up comes over comes around does some swingy swingy goes over the entrance comes around comes under comes over and around back into the brake run and back into the station starting to look nice but yep yeah, they still need to uh, torque down the bolts they still need to grout the support a lot of landscaping Quite a bit of work to finish up in this station. Really get your blood pumping. Oh yeah. Yeah, kind of matches.
this entrance is now closed for the ambassadors. Still hear a lot of banging going on over here. That's why we hear all the banging. and unique place in this world. But which one is the most important? Which one is the most impressive? By the end of this presentation, we'll answer those questions. Now, without further ado, please help me in welcoming Rhea with one of her favorite animal ambassadors. <laughs> this is Edgar. He is an Eastern Screech Owl. Before I go any further, who wants to hear a bird joke? Good, because I have to tell you one. Edgar here is a pretty smart guy. Does anyone want to guess what his favorite subject in school was? Mine. It was math. In particular, owl gibra. Uh. Thank you for laughing. If you didn't, this would be pretty awkward. <laughs> Edgar here is a rescue. Over the last five decades, Bush Gardens and our sister parks have helped rescue over 40,000 animals. That's pretty impressive. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Several years ago, Edgar was unfortunately hit by a car. Oh. Our veterinary team did an amazing job bringing him back to health, but he did lose his ability to fly, so the government deemed him non-releasable. That's why he's here with us. Because he's a rescue, we actually don't know how old he is. I've asked him multiple times, and he's never answered. Probably because he's an owl. But what we do know is he is fully grown. This is as big as Eastern Screech Owls get. Now just because he can't show you his amazing flying ability, doesn't mean he can't show you another one of his amazing adaptations. His camouflage. Now, no matter where you're sitting, you can probably see him against my teal shirt. But if I step out of the way and we hold him against the wood background, he almost disappears. Now, keep in mind that eastern screech owls live in the woods and hunt primarily between dusk and dawn. So between that low light, their size, and that amazing camouflage, they are typically never even seen. If you're a small rodent on the ground, you may not know you're the next meal until it's too late. <laughs> and if you don't think that's cool, well, obviously, Edgar couldn't give a hoot. Uh, Can we say goodbye to Edgar? Bye, Edgar. <laughs> Whether it's meat and mice like Edgar eats or fruits, flowers, and grains, Bush Gardens has an entire team dedicated to animal diets. Every animal diet is carefully analyzed and approved by our veterinary team to make sure that all of our animals here get their appropriate nutrition. Our nutrition center then prepares over 3,000 pounds of food for all of our animals here at the park. They spend their day washing, slicing, dicing, and preparing the food for every animal, including 
our next animal blaster. Please help me in welcoming Slash. <laughs> I heard a few gasps. There's no reason to throw a hissy fit. <laughs> Slash here is a Florida pine snake, and they are non-venomous, and he certainly is not poisonous. Before I go any further, does anybody know the difference between venom and poison? A few people, good. For those who may not know, poison has to be ingested. You must consume it, whereas venom needs to be injected through a stinger or barb or even a tooth. There are actually very few snakes on this planet that are truly venomous, and even fewer that are poisonous. But if you do happen to run into a snake, where do you guys think most people are likely to get bit? On the hand. A lot of people think it's your feet and ankles, but it's actually your hands and your wrists. And that's because there are typically two people out there. There are people like me or Ryan who want to pick up the silly noodle and love it. Yeah. Or there are people like my mother who want to karate chop it away. <laughs> the best rule of thumb no. if you ever come across a snake in their natural environment is just leave them be and they will leave you be. Now does anybody see Slash sticking out his tongue? Yep. Do you know what he's doing? Smelling the air. He is smelling. So he has something called a Jacobson's organ. And what that does is when he sticks his tongue out into the air, he collects particles. And then he'll bring it back up into his mouth and up into that Jacobson's organ. And that helps him smell his environment. He is able to tell if there's predator or prey around. And because his tongue is forked, he can actually sense which direction they're going in. Now flat slash here is an ectotherm. Has anybody heard the word ectotherm before? Yeah. A few people. How about the term cold-blooded? A lot more people. Now ectotherm is just a new sciencey word for cold-blooded because a reptile's blood isn't actually cold. It's just the temperature of its environment. You and I are endotherms or warm-blooded, which means that no matter what the weather's like outside, we're about 96.8 degrees. But if it's 100 degrees outside, Slash is about 100. And if it's 40, he's about 40. And here it's about 70 degrees. So what do you think he's at? 70. You guys got it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna say see you later, Slash. See ya, Slash. You guys are fun, I like you. <laughs> Adaptations are characteristics that help an animal survive and thrive in their environment. Adaptations can be physical, like Edgar's camouflage or the Jacobson's organ of a snake. Adaptations can also be behavioral and affect what an animal eats. Some of our animals here are more solitary, whereas some are more social. Take, for example, our black rhino, Miss Jody. She is a solitary species and she eats fruits and vegetables off of trees and bushes. Whereas our Asian elephants like to live in a larger group, but they eat just about the same things as Jody's does. Sometimes adaptations can be something that helps an entire ecosystem thrive. Like with our next animal ambassador. Please help me in welcoming Mel. Mel is a two-year-old short-beaked echidna. Now, looking at Mel's appearance, does anyone want to take a guess of what he's most closely related to? Porcupine. Porcupine, yeah, he does look very similar to a porcupine. But the main animal that he's closely related to is going to be a platypus. They may not look the same, but they share a lot of similarities. For one, they're both from Australia, they both are mammals, and they both lay eggs. That's right. Female echidnas lay eggs. I'm not echidna in you. <laughs> that one was kind of bad, huh? Yeah. Can we cue the laugh track? Much better. Mel was born, or I should say hatched, right here at Bush Gardens, Tampa. Bush Gardens has one of the most successful echidna breeding programs in the world. Even so, very, li very little is known about echidna breeding. What we do know is a mommy echidna will lay one single egg in her pouch, and after 10 days, 
that baby will hatch. Does anybody want to guess what a baby echidna is called? It's called a puddle. I think that's one of the cutest animal baby names ever. A puddle. But a puggle will stay with its mom for a total of 50 days after it hatches. And during that time, the mom will spend her days digging dens and hollows in order to keep her and her little ones safe. Speaking of digging, let's check out those nails. They're designed to do just that, and they spend the majority of their life digging. It is estimated that an adult echidna can move about seven tons of dirt in just one year. So just by being the unique creatures that they are, they naturally help their environment. Can we all say good day, mate to Mel? Good day, mate. <laughs> Conservation is a huge part of what we as zoos do. Many species have been saved from the brink of extinction since the zoos. The California condor, the black-footed ferret, the Guam kingfisher, and so many more. AZA accredited facilities like Bush Gardens participate in a species survival plan. We're a part of so many, including the African penguin, tiger, and our Ryan tank family is growing. We're also a part of a SAFE program, which stands for Saving Animals from Extinction. We're a part of the Asian elephant, Eastern Indigo Snake SAFE program, and even cheetah. Bush Gardens Foundation have supported many initiatives to help support wild animals and the places that they are found. Sometimes the entire conservation of an environment can rely on one species, and they're called the keystone species. And that's exactly what our next ambassador is. So please help me to welcome Flash. <laughs> you guys get the name? <laughs> so Flash here is a red-footed tortoise. Now one of the most amazing adaptations that tortoises have has to be that shell. Now I'm going to take a poll of the audience. Who thinks that when Flash gets home after a long day of work, she takes off her shell and hangs it up like a backpack? Nope. I do see a few hands. Who thinks that when Flash is done with work, she scoots all the way into her shell, like it's her home, sits on her couch and watches Netflix? Yep. A few people. <laughs> Who thinks that her shell is actually attached to her body and she cannot come completely out nor go completely in? Yeah, there we that go. That is the correct <laughs> answer. Now her shell is made up of 60 interconnected bones and is fused to her spine and rib cage. It is attached to her just like your spine is attached to you. It's not an impenetrable shield, but it does protect her vital organs. She finally realized that there's food on the table with her. Um, her shell has nerve endings, and she does like the sensation of scratch from a keeper's hand or even a small brush. Some tortoises also like the sensation of water from a sprinkler, a sprayer, or a hose. Speaking of water, does anybody know the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? It's water. Now, turtles are made for aquatic or even semi-aquatic environments. Whereas tortoises wade, they tend to have more cylindrical or elephantine feet. <laughs> this is the first time in a while where she's had food on the table with her and it's just making me smile, so I get sidetracked. <laughs> um, the best way for you guys to tell if you're looking at an animal <laughs> like Flash <laughs> to tell if they're a turtle or a tortoise is by looking at their feet. A turtle's going to have more webbed feet or flippers, whereas a tortoise like Flash is showing you is going to have these elephantine feet. Now there are 49 species of tortoises and they can be found on every continent on this world, except for two. One of those is Antarctica and the other one is Australia, which is weird because I thought they had everything. But something that all 49 of those species have in common is that they're all typically considered a keystone species. And again, that is a species that can help their environment in many ways. Some dig dens and hollows for other animals to use as shelter. Some are prey items and others are even, even opportunistic scavengers cleaning up their environment of carry-on. Flash here is a seed distributor. As she eats certain fruits and berries, 
She will then go and plant those seeds as she moves around. Way to go, Flash. Helping your environment. She's really munching. We're gonna let her finish. We're just gonna sit here for 20 minutes. <laughs> Goodbye, Flash. Thank you. Positive reinforcement is a pretty simple concept. An animal does something we like, or even something that we want to see again, and we give them something they like. Like Flash, it could be a food bowl. Others can be a well-placed scratch, time with one of their favorite keepers, or even an animal's favorite toy. Positive reinforcement helps us to build trust between us and our animal, and helps us to teach them some pretty complex behaviors. Some that you've seen today, and others throughout the park, like blood collection, ultrasound, and radiographs. Scientists from around the world have been challenged by animals on how they define intelligence. Some animals can problem solve, and even some can use tools. And that brings me to our next animal ambassador. He's a pretty humble guy. He doesn't like to toot his own horn. That'll be funnier in a second. Please help me in welcoming Baraka. Aww. He is a 25-year-old Southern Ground Horn Bill. Get it? Horn? Moving on. <laughs> Birds from around the world have been challenging how we view intelligence. Some can recognize themselves in mirrors, others can use tools, and some can even problem solve and solve puzzles. For example, how does the southern ground hornbill from Africa reach its prey when it's burrowed underground? They have a unique challenge of actually having to break through the ground in order to get their prize below. They use their horn like a hammer in order to do that. So today, Baraka is prepared to show you another demonstration of his problem-solving abilities and something we can all do at home to just help the environment a little bit, and that's recycle. Go ahead, Baraka, show us how it's done. Thank you for giving him a round of applause. Recycling is just one of the many things that we can do to help the environment. Can anyone name a few more? You can just shout them out. Sustainable shopping. Wonderful, sustainable shopping. Thank you. Um, recycling, using sustainably sourced seafood and sustainably sourced palm oil, using reusable water bottles and bags. There's a lot of things that we can do to help the environment. We met a lot of amazing animals today, right? But which one was the most important? Which one was the most remarkable? Who thinks it was Edgar with that amazing camouflage he has? Who thinks it was Mel being able to move seven tons of dirt in just one year? Who thinks it was Baraka showing us how easy it is to recycle? Yeah, Baraka. Who thinks that because they are all different, they are all important, which makes them each uniquely remarkable? Bingo. Me too. Every animal has characteristics that help them survive and their ecosystem thrive. They all have an important place in this world and so do you. We all have different strengths, talents, and skills, but we're all put on this world together. Whether you strive to be the next great conservationist, a zookeeper, a veterinarian, or to just change a habit at home, we can all make a difference in this world. In fact, just by being here at Bush Gardens, you've already had. Being here, you help us support conservation, education, rescue, and research. So thank you so much for helping us do what we do each and every day. Celebrate and care for this world we all share. On behalf of myself and my coworkers, both human and animal, we hope you have a great rest of your day here at Bush Gardens. Goodbye, everyone. Yes, and you were all those artists. Yes.
I am on Kumba and I am giving Kumba some love today. I don't think Kumba's going anywhere anytime soon. So for all you naysayers that say, get your last ride on Kumba, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? They just put some new footers there this past year. They got new signage up. With all this work being done, I'm really sure that they're gonna keep Kumba for at least another five, six years. You can take that to the bank. He's having fun with it. Yeah, well, you, you, you see him, he's smiling, he's having fun with it. a long way down there we go
hot today. <laughs> yeah, she's running real hot today. Uh, unfortunately, Lori's Landing is closed currently. So we can't check out our feathered friends. They are busy doing some more refurbishment. But I thought they just recently came out of refurbishment. Anyway, they are doing some more work with the rocks and repainting and, and everything else. So hopefully in about two or three weeks, Lori's Landing will reopen. The Cookaberry Aviary. Uh, nope, it's not sitting up there like it used to. What? Oh, hey. There he is. Hello. Hi. Cookaberry, right? Yeah. Hi there. You are so beautiful. Yeah, hi. Sound of the kookaburra. You gonna say hi? Rosette Spoonbill. Huh. Thought I saw another one back here. Ah, there it is. Hello. some more ducks over here. And a rare breed of human over here. <laughs> ah. Okay. Hi. Is there one sitting above you? Huh? Is there one sitting above you? Uh, yeah. Hello. Good thing that was just seeds or something. Oh, hey, there's another one there. <laughs> Hi. Ooh. Uh, well, I'm gonna say a yellow chested something. <laughs> rat pigeons? Rat pigeons? 
Oh. Oh, now, now he's. They're both making noise. So funny. <laughs> They're so cute. Come into your area. How you doing? Yeah. course we can't forget our black swans which are over there in the corner way over there as you're going out hello in this area here. Hello you two. Hi. This one right next to me is probably the dude. And the smaller one right there, right underneath me, is now the female, probably. I can't get over how cool this looks. And with the new signage and everything. Bush Gardens Food and Wine Festival 2015 to 2024. There's a painter here. 
and boy does he do great work Maggie got her lamb chops again and I got the Canadian version of a gyro gyro is definitely messy <laughs> it tastes good it actually has a a sweet taste to it not sure where I'm getting that sweet taste from but it, it does taste a lot like a, a Greek gyro while the uh, Canadian gyro was my liner I'm getting some Timbits for my lizard, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. Well, guys, another wonderful, fun, and exciting day here at Bridge Gardens. Just as you can see in the background, we got our last run in of the day on our Ngwazi and, uh, well, it's uh, almost 5 o'clock and it's about time to call it a day. And don't forget, next week we are doing the meet and greet in front of Iron Grazi. Yep, from next. From 11 to 12. Yep, that's next Friday from what? 11 to 12, right in front of Iron Grazi. Pretty much uh, almost as soon as the gates opened up, we'll be there. And, uh, well, that'll do for today until the next time we'll see you at the parks and now for the big long list of all of our supporters hit it